hey, hi there, you're making such a good progress in this series. I'm so proud of you. And to reward you for all the hard work that you've done so far, we're going to talk about very interesting and, of course, very scary topic that yeah, everybody's very afraid of. And, of course, we're going to talk about how to unit test our plugins. Um, now, why would you even unit test the plugins? Unit tests are really good at yelling back at you when you publish a new feature and you break something and the old logic doesn't work anymore. In that case, unit tests will tell you, hey, you forgot this and that test case. And you will know exactly what, what broke, um, what test cases failed, and you will know what to fix. And the second reason is that they are your personal playground to test stuff locally before you publish to production, publish to the repository. With unit tests, you can prepare yourselves a little walled garden where you don't break anything and you can you can play around with the code as much as possible, test whatever you, whatever you want, and make sure that the code actually works under specific scenarios. Um, and this also comes in hand with reason three. They help you remember what you were thinking two years ago or five years ago after a code is already in production, happily running, and you need to change it. Now, yeah, the scare word of the day that we're going to learn today is fixtures. So when we are writing unit tests, we are, we are writing fixtures. So we're preparing these this test examples, which contain some test data. Let's say in our example, this will be um, this will be our target entity. And we know that if we feed our plugin with this specific target entity, it should always return the same results. So th these test cases are fixed. They are not, they cannot be manipulated uh, through an external database because they, they all run locally. That's what they're called fixtures. And how do we write these fixtures? Well, we have two steps. We need to prepare the test data. We need to, to think of test cases, test examples. What, um, what all different scenarios might your code face? Um, and what different scenarios must your code support. Then you need to run your code and then you need to verify the results. So your code will run, it will process this input test data and it will spit out some results or change some parameters wherever. And you want to verify these results and make sure that they comply with expectations. Uh, so now we might be asking, how are we going to achieve this, this locality? How are we going to run these plugins locally? Do we, do we need to spin up a virtual machine and run the whole CRM? Is that even possible? No, we're going to actually write what's called mocks. Mocks are lake dependencies. So instead of connecting to a real CRM, we're just going to make up some of the connection code and we're going to fake the 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 behavior of this connection code to behave like it's it to make it look like it's working with the zero that's actually not that hard to do so let me just show you how that works i need to make sure that this plugin actually capitalizes my my name and that it doesn't break if it's let's say if the target is not present and if the the name uh, attribute is not present in the target so this code must not break if if there's no target uh, must not break if there's no name on the account and must capitalize the account name these are the three test cases that we want to to support so i will right click on my solution and click on add and then do new project and the project that we're looking for is called unit tests Yes, let's try that. So we are working with .NET Framework here because the plugin is for .NET Framework. So our unit test must also be written in .NET Framework. Now we're using what's called a testing framework and our testing framework of choice is called MS Test. There are two other options. They are called X unit and N unit, but we'll just start with, with a simple MS test. For the project name, I will use the same name as my plugin. So ls.plugins.capitalize.tests. So same name, but dot tests suffix. And the same .NET framework, and I'll just do create. And now I have I have the basis for my the basic structure form for my fixture. So I have this test class, this test method, and now I just want to rename this unit test and test method one. So I will do um, account capitalize tests, and I'll also rename the file. So quick actions, and then rename file. I'll go back to my plugin and just 
cut these, these test examples and paste them in here so that I don't forget what am I doing. And each of these test cases will be one test method. So I can just use the first one and I will do don't break if there is no target. So I will do account capitalize and don't or doesn't break if no target, something like that. So I like to name these test methods kind of descriptively so that it's it's very, very clear what, what they're doing. And I can do, I can just copy them, um, make two other versions and doesn't break if no account name. And the third one will be capitalizes account name. Perfect. Now, just as we did, I want to, to make some, some preparations first. So just as we did in this plugin, I want to, um, to, to um, transfer over this name of, of my field. So I'll, I ju I'll just copy this constant into here um, so that, that I have it available here and I can make a private string. So the idea is to call this action method because this is what I wrote and I will then call it and check back the input parameters if they changed. This account capitalize is a class, so we need to initialize it as a class. So I'll do var plugin equals new account capitalize. Yeah, now of course this is a new project, so I need to reference the, the existing project back, right click on your test project and then do add and then do reference. And under project, project, select your existing plugin project, then click on OK. And now this will get resolved, I think. Yes, it should get resolved as well. So we have our plugin and now we can actually call so plugin dot action, just like that. I told you it was going to be it was going to be your playground. So we're just calling this method and let's see what yeah, and it looks like we also need to include this microsoft.xstorm.sdk here. So I will not argue with that. Let's just do install package and use local version. And that will also fix this issue. Now, yeah, a whole bunch of packages being installed. That's fine. That's expected. Now this action, of course, expects these parameters here, uh, but I don't have these parameters just yet. So instead of the parameters, I'll just put in null, 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 null just like that. So that's, I believe that's a good start. And now what I want to do is just put down a breakpoint and I'll go to here at the top to test and open test explorer. Text, test explorer is similar to solution explorer, explorer for your tests. So all the tests that you write, uh, you will see here at the site. So you can see there are three tests here and you can also read their names under here. But a nice thing in Visual Studio is that you get this exclamation point um, marks and you can just click on it and do debug. And this will just run this, this little method and you will see some magic here. So uh, it, it's made our, us a new, a new object and now uh, it will run this action. So if we step in, we can see that we're inside this plugin. We're actually running the plugin locally. Isn't that so nice? And now we can do one more step and one more step. And it says, of course, system null reference exception because object reference is not set, blah, blah, blah. Because this context is null, obviously, because we set it as null. And what can we do about it? Yeah, what we can, what, what can we do about it? We need this iPlugin execution context and we have no CRM. What, what can we do about it? Well, we can create ourselves a little mock and that's actually very easy to do. So I will just copy the name that we need. I'll go to Solution Explorer, right click on my test project. I'll do add folder and I'll name it mocks. Right click on the mocks, add new item and the file name will be mock um, plugin execution context, like that, add. And I have this internal class, this, this, this is all nice. And then I want to, um, to implement I plug in execution context. This extra SDK has been properly imported. And now this is kind of a scary part, but don't, don't panic just yet. So right click on it, <laughs> quick actions, implement interface, blah, 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 blah. a whole bunch of crap just, just appeared, but it's, it's something we can control. So this mock 
is is huge at the moment. But to be honest, we don't need practically none of this stuff. We don't need to know the message name. We don't need the, the user ID. We just need these input parameters. So if we go back to account to our tests and instead of, and we can do var context equals new mock, uh, mock plugin execution context, uh, and now I can use this context and pass it as instead of this null. And if I debug the method again and step in, and you see the exception now is somewhere else. It's not null anymore, but instead it throws this not implemented exception. This is some, something we can control. Actually, to fix this error, we just need to get rid of this placeholder here. So I'll just remove this, this lambda here, whatever it's called, and I'll just make a regular C sharp property. So I'll do um, this, this brackets, get, set. I'm sure you've seen that before. And I will do new. I'll also initialize it. New uh, parameter collection. And that's it. So these input parameters are now properly initialized. This is our dictionary. And let's try to run the tests again. So go back to the method, debug, step in, go next, go next. And look at that. It's not breaking anymore. It's it's actually, it, it got through this. But of course, this input parameters contains no keys at the moment. And we're gonna fix that just, just yet. But our code doesn't break. And that's exactly what we want. So yeah, it, it just returned the value. And I would call this a test well done, actually. So if you if you continue, you see there's a little nice green check mark, which says that the test execution was successful, nothing broke, um, no exceptions whatsoever. So that's perfect, we're halfway done actually. So now what we can do for the next test, um, we can just copy everything that we have here. We can start implementing the, the context actually. So here within mock plugin execution context, we just made ourselves these input parameters available. So I can now use that and I'll open this uh, square, uh, curly braces and I'll do input parameters equals new um, parameter collection. Actually, I don't need this thing or I don't want it. I'll do parentheses and then uh, like that. And I need, it looks like I need to do, I need to actually use XRM SDK. Yeah, that's something I want. So that's all fine. Um, and now I can I can actually implement these input parameters. So the input parameter that we need is of course called a target. A target, and it will be equal to new entity. Perfect. And now in the previous tutorial, I, sh I showed you how to make a new entity. So the entity needs an entity name. This will be account. And we actually don't need an ID, but let's make it anyway. So GUID dot new GUID. And now inside this entity, I can open another set of curly braces and I can just add the attribute that I want. And the attribute that I want, name attribute, um, is what I need. So I need to fill this name attribute and I will set it to no. Yeah, right. So let's try to actually run the test. Let's, let's debug it. So I'll set my my um, breakpoint here and do debug. Let's see how the plugin runs. And that's our context. And I'll just skip that and I'll step into my account. So the next thing, and you can see that this, uh, the, this condition is now satisfied. So we have the input parameter, it's target, we have the, it's, it's not null, and the context is, in the target is an entity. Perfect, so that, that's great. And if I do one more step, I can see our target and I can actually inspect it. And under attributes, I can see these keys, we have our name and the values are null. Perfect, let's let's see what, what happens with that. So let's do next, contains key. Yes, it does contain this key. And let's also check, um, and it looks like it, it, it works correctly. So name, the value of this name attribute is actually null which is perfect. So the plugin just returns, nothing nothing actually gets done. And that's great. For the third case, we can again, just copy and paste this, this same thing. And instead of, so we have this name attribute and instead of null, we can put in um, something, something like this. Let's actually make another variable. I'll do var account name and that will be blah, blah, blah. And now I can put in this account name. Um, let's set another breakpoint here, debug, action, step in, 
let's let's go forward so we know that that works that works that works so name value is not null anymore and the target name will be set to uppercase so that's great let's let's actually check it in here so attributes values it's uppercase so that's perfect it actually it really works and our test kind of is successful but we must do one more step here and in the previous two examples this was kind of not necessary because we just wanted tests not to fail but now we actually want to check some so we want to check the context we want to check if this if this value has actually been uppercased and we can do that we can ensure a value by using assert assert dot r equal inside r equal we need to pass to uh, two parameters the expected value which will be our account name dot to uppercase variant so this is this is the value that that we expect so uppercase account name and the next thing that i want to to use is um i want to get the value out of this target and for that i will just need to extract the target from the context so i'll do var target equals um, context dot input input parameters target and I will cast that to as entity that's great well, now I can do target name attribute I believe that's actually it so let's just click here and run the test and let's see if we deserve a flag here and test run passed it says here at the bottom so <laughs> I don't know about you, but I would call that a successful session. So we have fully working unit test for, for our plugin. We tested three scenarios and we now know that if we change anything in this plugin, we know that, that the plugin will complain. We will get this ugly red little crosses. And um, yeah, this way we'll know that our code actually works. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.